Yeah, you need to stay up to date with the meta, guys. Like, if you're trying to climb ladder and you have no idea what deck you're versing, that's already a huge disadvantage for all of the other tips I've mentioned. Hello, how is it going? This is going to be an Iron to Masters Legends of Rune Terror guide teaching you the ways that you yourself can inevitably reach the Masters. It's only a matter of time, realistically. I'm going to be leaving a few section points here that we're going to be focusing on. So if there's any area that you are most interested in, I will leave links to the timestamps in the description so you can go jump to that right now. I just want to say if you enjoyed the video, would you be kind enough to leave a like? I'm making this for you so you yourself can Reach Masters this is going to be very in-depth, guys. Enjoy. Time is short, I understand that. So what I'm going to be doing in this video, first of all, is we're going to summarize what I believe it takes to reach Masters. So that we're going to cover all the sections in a brief amount of time and then go more into detail about each point later. So what decks to play right now as of the season of Fortune, patch 1.5. If you want to reach Masters, I recommend you start playing uh, Noxus Harrowing. Unfortunately, the deck may seem, you know, a bit hated on and a bit just mindless, but honestly, if you want to reach Masters effectively, that is the deck I'm going to recommend that you play. Shall we move on to the other points? Another thing I want to add that improvement is the most important part in this game. Regardless of what rank you are, if you yourself improve at the game and focus on the tilt, the patience, the tips I'm going to be sharing, then you will eventually reach Masters without even realizing it. I want to talk about another point which is going to be focus and tilt. People are, everyone's very different in terms of like their mentality, their strengths, their weaknesses. I want to talk about focus for a bit because uh, some players will play a lot, some players won't play as much. It's important that if you're playing a lot, you need to maintain a good amount of focus alongside with that because you might just be making too many mistakes that it's not worth playing at that uh, amount of time. I want to add that when I went from Diamond to Masters, I did this in about 60 games, but I didn't play it all in a quick amount of time. It took me a couple of weeks to do it from Diamond to Masters. I would play a few games a day, a couple of hours a day, and I would keep up my maximum focus. As soon as I start to feel my focus diminishing, I would uh, move on and take a break. Also, I want to talk about tilt. If you start to lose a couple games in a row, two games in a row, at that point, take a break. Come back to the game later. Keep playing. Also, patience. Masters is not something you are going to reach overnight. It's be it's important to be patient. This is also relevant to in-game decision making. Okay, so if you're not being patient in game, then you're probably going to make some mistakes where you could have just took your time a little bit further. Very important for the mulligan as well. And some general tips I would say is to just uh, take your time on every turn. Uh, focus on the decision making is the most important thing. Uh, think about what cards your opponent may be playing and then uh, focus on punishing them when they make mistakes. That's going to be the summarization of what this video is going to be. We're going to break down more in depth on each part. So as I stated in the summarization, I do believe Noxus Harrowing is unfortunately one of the best decks to play right now, but it doesn't mean you have to play that deck necessarily. There's some other strong tier one decks and I do recommend you stick to the tier one decks, maybe tier two, but you're not going to hit those good win, win streaks with the tier two decks sometimes. Um, the thing about Noxus Harrowing right now is that you do have some unfavorable matchups, but they're not completely unlosable. Uh, Harrowing itself causes this heavy amount of polarization that allows the deck to realistically beat any deck. Outside of that fact, it has good matchups against Ionia, which is quite prevalent, and people love to play Karma Ezra on Heimerdinger, and you're going to kind of uh, not have a favorable matchup against Shadow Wilds and Nivea Braum decks, but you still can take wins off them, so don't get me wrong. If I could recommend any other deck, it will probably be Karma Ezreal right now or Heimerdinger if you really want to climb. Within within these three decks, this is the way to go. You can actually opt into playing a couple of those decks and mixing it up. If you're kind of like trying to really abuse what you're facing at the moment, if you're simply facing Anivia Braum over and over, consider changing decks and move to Karma Ezreal. But most of the time, you probably it's not going to work out as you might hope. You might switch decks and end up bumping into a matchup you wouldn't have preferred anyway. So generally, I will say stick to one deck, tier one deck. I understand like if you really like to experiment with decks, unfortunately, that's not going to be the way to climb. I know it might sound a bit of a shocker, but it doesn't mean that you can't be the one who implements and, you know, creates a deck that's really powerful. But if you want to get there right now and you're not as confident in deck building, Noxus Harrowing, Karma as Heimerdinger. 
those are going to be the decks to play and then from there shall we move on to improvement so improvement as i said in the summary if you focus on improving in this game that is going to be how you naturally climb without even realizing it's important to like look at where you went wrong because that's going to be your first track for getting a lot better if you can understand at what points in the game that you're making mistakes then you can be sure to capitalize on them in the future something that is quite common to see is that like we're winning so many games we're not we're not really worrying about that aspect so obviously we relate to improvement in winning but that's not realistically how you're going to improve the most improvement you will make is from losing so unfortunately it's good to lose games too because you can look to what i could have done differently and uh which cards i should have played and when it's really important you know like as much as it's great to win if you can't improve then winning means nothing you know it's funny i spent a lot of time editing my videos and going through my vods finding gameplay footage and i realized as i go through it i see so many moves and mistakes and different plays i should have done and when even if i did win the game i'm like hmm i could have done this differently and i would have like really improved my odds of winning it's kind of the funny thing too like you know uh it's kind of easy for me because i am constantly focused around my content constantly focused around videos but it doesn't mean that you might not consider doing something similar i'm not sure if, if you have any recording software one of the best ways you'll see the mistakes and improvement aspect of this is actually from watching games you could also consider watching some other people's games but you yourself seeing the mistakes that you made really shows you and the only person to blame is you so if if possible if you have the patience which kind of doubles up with patience reviewing vods is a great way to uh improve it's probably one of the best ways to improve visually seeing the game the games play out and what could have been done differently is really going to boost the speed at which you improve and that is no exaggeration now i understand people might not have as much access to you know being able to record their games or review their games unfortunately there's no way to like really at the moment implement in game a way of watching a replay that would be kind of interesting though runeterra uh interested in seeing some sort of some sort of way to watch the replays but anyway, let's say you unfortunately can't do anything like that. At that point, it's probably going to be really important that during each game, you have maximum focus and maximum patience. And you start to consider afterwards. Take a moment after the game to think how it played out, especially if you lost. And think, hmm, okay. Crimson Disciple turn 2 versus Legion Grenadier turn 2. Maybe I should have played Grenadier against this matchup. And then you can go from there. This is a little example of ways to improve, right? The next thing I'm gonna mention, if you're fortunate enough to be surrounded by people who are also playing Runeterra, it might be worth having them jump alongside you. It's kind of hard because there's no spectator mode to understand, but if there's any sort of way a friend can watch a VOD of yours or somebody you know that plays Runeterra as well might be able to lend a hand. It's good to get feedback from people too. Feedback's really good because it's, it's one to do it all by yourself, but getting a bit of feedback from other great players in the Runeterra community, great improvement. I mean, I, I'm streaming, right? So like I'm getting people telling me on the spot, oh man, you should have done this differently. Or I'm playing uh, duo queue, we'll call it, with some other players. So for me, I've been fortunate enough to kind of get access to that. But if you have any way yourself can get access to a similar kind of thing, that can be very helpful too. Having a word, like next side by side wording uh, plays out and like, you know, getting feedback on the immediate place too can help you. And uh, sometimes you might just kind of cheat your way up some ranks because you have your friends alongside you helping you out. Kind of like coaching, I guess. But I'm not going to say go out and like spend some money on coaching because I don't know if like there's a lot to take in from coaching. I'll be honest, but uh, it's, it's as long as you're absorbing the information appropriately and, and improving quickly, then that's great. But if you think you're someone that can't quite receive the information that good from like someone else coaching you then yeah as i said it's going to be really important for your self-improvement and having patience right so i think that sh that should hopefully cover all my thoughts about improvement this one kind of wasn't i try and make these relative to the game as the best i can but in the end i think some of some of the ways that you're going to improve over runeterra is by actually implementing uh, self-improvement outside of just the game itself you know as i said focus until patience these tips are going to share improvement it's also about you and then the rest of the game and improvement 
the rest of the in-game improvement is i mean is like done side by side right so as i said shall we move on to the next topic i'm gonna talk about focus and tilt a lot more in depth focus and tilt tilt especially is gonna be a hot topic it's gonna be a bit controversy um i want to add i am uh, very easily tilted i'm sure there's a lot of players who are it could be very hard sometimes to not get tilted especially when playing card games because unfortunately um sometimes the game's not going to be in your control uh it, this might even be relative to games that aren't completely uh biased on like you know having percentages as a win rate right but um tilt's a real thing and that's really going to affect the way you play even in a card game we see tilt in other games it's a bit more visible to see because you know you're just inting it down running it down mid right you see some bullshit like that but in card games it's also quite visual too you'll start to and i've noticed this myself that you'll start to just kind of play your cards carelessly you'll be like oh i'm not even going to play around this card anymore because it doesn't matter uh i'm just gonna fucking assume that my opponent has every answer i'm gonna play way too passive and be an idiot and or I'm just going to change decks because I keep facing this deck and it just doesn't matter. I'm not even, oh, this deck just bet me and I'm going to play it because clearly that's the way to go. These are the kind of attitudes that will start to lead you into a spiral, right? And uh, it's really going to affect the way you play and the way you enjoy the game too. It's also important. I haven't mentioned it in the, in the focus points here, but enjoying the game, this is going to be a bit controversy, all right? Um, sometimes climbing to masters isn't always enjoyable, but you find enjoyment in, in the competitiveness, right? That's kind of like, it's a weird way of looking at it, I understand, but most importantly, if you're not 100% enjoying the game, then what are you doing? Why are you watching this video? <laughs> but um, yeah, climbing to masters isn't always going to be enjoyable, but you're going to enjoy it when you get there, okay? So yeah, I want to talk about that for a sec. That hopefully covers everything about tilt and maybe those examples might be relative to you as well. But let's focus on focus. Uh, let's, <laughs> let's focus on focusing. So as much as tilt can really destroy your focus, we also need to make sure we're focusing on not tilting, vice versa. But let's talk about focus in game because keeping up maximum focus, you know, staying hydrated, all that kind of stuff, making sure you're well well fed, just actual IRL things to take care of your body. It's going to help you in game a lot more and it's going to help you focus a lot more. Um one of the most one of the most scariest things I see is uh and uh, I might be it might be a bit controversial. That seems to be a common theme I keep saying, but seeing players play for countless hours grinding themselves dry mentality just breaking themselves down to reach masters it's one way of doing it but some some of these players um can keep up a lot better focus for a lot period of time longer period of time and they probably do that by staying hydrated eating well etc you need to understand your limits you need to understand how how, the, how best you focus in game for me it's a couple of hours a day keeping up maximum 100 percent efficiency and then as soon as i start to feel off that's when i'll take a break but you can also focus on your focusing right taking your time and being patient is a big tan in hand thing for focusing as soon as the game starts start focusing don't have like if you're if you're really wanting to climb don't have like other stuff going on in the background don't have like you can have streams on in the background i don't know it's kind of it's all on you but if you're someone who gets easily distracted then only have the game open be focused on that game 100 percent i'd rather that you would play less games with more focus than more games just being easily distracted does that make sense i think that makes sense so for me um when i'm streaming that i actually don't have as much focus as i should but that's because you know i want to be engaging with the community and chatting with all the people watching uh but if you are someone who struggles with distraction then designate designate some time that sounds so weird designating some time that you can put 100 percent efficiency into rune terror it's going to help you dramatically whether that's only like an hour or not and then you can kind of mix it up you can have like periods of time where you're in complete focus and then maybe you're kind of like still going at it i'm not going to say don't play when you're not 100 percent focused because you won't you won't maybe have enough time to do that but let's just say 
you can have like an hour of gameplay where you're at maximum focus you're going to improve your win rate just by being completely indulged in the game and yes that is the way to go i'd rather you do a majority of it you're climbing like that than a majority of it like you know fucking being cooked or whatever so now you're probably wondering oh that's great fake hero you've talked about focus and all this but how can i improve my focus how can i realistically improve my focus i'm still gonna have my streams on i'm still gonna do this and that well i guess first of all just play each turn as patiently as you can play each turn to maximum efficiency that you can do the best you can to focus um, if you've got other like obligations and distractions, then just do do your best to focus. I guess that's the one thing about focus, right? It's not like something that can be as natural for some people as it is for others. But just take your time. You get access to a lot of like the rope. This is kind of like dripping a little bit into patience as well. Just like you've got a lot of time per per each turn. I know <laughs> you might tilt your opponent by roping them, but uh, seriously, just take your time. Think it through. Uh, as the game goes on and on, start to plan out your turns and then uh, see how you go. Hopefully that covers enough on the focus and tilt. Um, shall we move on to patience, even though we kind of covered it. Okay, so patience. Uh, how can I talk about patience in a way that is super relative to the game, right? So, first of all, if you spend a lot of time having a lot of patience right now, then your games will get easier and easier, if that makes sense. If you take your time to learn your deck, get super comfortable with it and be patient with the gameplay, then it's going to get easier for you. And then things are going to start to happen like unnaturally, like, or naturally. It's just going to become like, kind of like muscle memory for your gameplay, which in a sense can help you focus a lot more too, right? So patience, focus coming really hand in hand at the moment, really uh, bleeding into each other. Spend a lot of time having a lot of patience with your focusing on the game. Uh, each game, be very patient, <laughs> rope your opponent, they're gonna be tilted with you, it does not matter. You want to win, you want to get better, you want to improve, be patient first of all, then things will get a lot easier. You can also be patient uh, with your opponent too, right? Don't fucking get mad and tilted if your opponent's taking their time. It doesn't matter. We're here to improve. We're here to focus. We're here to not tilt. We're here to play the best decks. And I'm going to share tips in a second. And yeah, be patient. Also be patient with like, as I said earlier, um, you know, it doesn't have to be just in game. Be patient out of game. Like take some time to just think about what you could have done differently as i said earlier that's another thing about patience too it's easy to just like you know keep spamming out games and just fucking ah like masters fuck yeah take a bit of time to be patient even in between games sit back for a second just be like just take in the game just be like oh that game went pretty well i did this and i really outplayed my opponent or you know like sit back oh i lost this game but you know what now that i think about it Maybe if I hadn't have played Harrowing, I might have won. Be patient in game, outside of game. Be patient in life as well while we're at it. <laughs> Bit of a self-improvement there. And yeah, you'll naturally start to get better. Your patience will improve, your gameplay will improve, and then you'll eventually start fucking getting to masters more sooner. Just be patient with your opponent too if they rope you every turn. Sometimes they do it to tilt you. It's all about the mind games, okay? mind games you might even tilt your opponent in sense by being a super, super patient player they might think that you're trolling but who cares we're here to win All right so this one's probably gonna be realistically the most popular i would imagine a lot of people will click to this point to really see what my tips are so these are going to be my personal tips i didn't write personal tips they kind of are general tips and personal tips but i'm going to share tips that i believe can really boost you to the next level okay so tip number one probably might be my best tip and that is once you have like kind of mastered a deck and you've gotten super comfortable with it one of the best things you can do and i've said this in previous card games and this is like my go-to strategy for a lot of card games and just games in general that is going to be to focus more on what your opponent's doing than what you're doing of course i don't mean that i mean that semi sarcastically but if you can start to focus a lot more on what your opponent's doing as well as by being familiar with what your cards you're playing and stuff 
Think about what your opponent's doing. That way you can really get into the head and punish them. I think a lot of the time you can put your opponents into positions where they play into you by just focusing on what they're doing. Hand reading is a huge thing, right? Hand reading is a huge thing. It's really good to focus. If there's a period of, if there's like a, a point in time in game where X card would have been superb, let's say Vile Feast would have been like a, such a good play for your opponent to make against you, and he didn't play it, he's probably not got it. And then you can start to punish them, right? By uh, realizing that they haven't got this card, so maybe I can do this line and really punish them. I think a really common one is early game cards like that. Like, like especially Shadow Wild Tools, Vile Feast and Glimpse Beyond. Especially if you're playing an aggro deck, like as I've mentioned, Noxus, um, the Noxus Harrowing aggro deck's really good, right? If there's a point in time where your opponent could have played Glimpse Beyond to deny some sort of value or Vile Feast to kill one of your units, they probably don't have it. You can start to play a bit more loose and punish your opponent and then make him feel like, oh man, if I just had Vile Feast, I would have smashed this guy. He's just playing into my Vile Feast so hard. And yeah, that's, that's a big thing, right? Another tip too that um, kind of just helps me with decision making in game is uh, you look looking at the matchup state and looking at my opponent's hand size and how many cards it do have because sometimes you can really narrow and guarantee victory by realizing that my opponent has one card in hand, I probably don't need to play around this many cards and then you can really just punish them. You can play a little bit loose but you can also kind of like navigate your resources in an appropriate way that causes your opponent to just run out of run dry this is probably most relevant for a lot of other decks other than the noxus harrowing deck i've mentioned that i recommend you play but when it comes to matchups in general if you start to see your opponent running out of resources great time to punish them great time to kind of like go all in and just end the game sooner and yeah that's definitely helped me a lot as i've improved is looking just simply how many cards my opponent has in hand first of all then you can decide what card you think they might have and then if they have that card, then they don't have this card. So then you can do this play and it should work. Or I'll take a coin flip right now. But my opponent probably hasn't got this card, so I'm going to win the game. Okay, during your mulligan, this is probably like one of the points in the game where you should take the most time with. When I, when I was talking about focusing, uh, focusing earlier and in, uh, patience, take the most time in your mulligan. That is uh, the most important part of every game, every card game in general. Just any TCG game, digital or uh, in real life, traditional I mean. Mulligan is super important, that's the point in the game I'd recommend for anyone to spend the most time improving on. And yeah, you might be mindlessly just like, oh, I'm just going to look for the early game, I'm going to look for a 1, 2 drop, 3 drop. Consider the matchup that you're in right now, it might not even be that bad to keep multiple 3 drops, it might not even be that bad to not even look for the 1 drop. Uh, for example, with Noxus Harrowing, if I kind of get given a hand that has these cards and no one drop, I'm not going to full mulligan aggressively looking for like a one drop to start off the game because I think that's how I win. I'll probably keep Double Crimson Disciple here and there with a three drop or uh, I might keep Harrowing in the opening hand against certain matchups because Harrowing is legitimately a way to beat up on control decks. Uh, so there's been times where I've kept Harrowing in the opening hand for it. But this is also relative for any other matchup. Mirror matchups, you know, uh, unfavorable matchups, all these things you can do to improve your win rate. And it all starts in the mulligan. So take your time with the mulligan. It's going to help you a lot and it's going to boost your win rate. Literally, you might win a game strictly from mulligan if you play it right. Um, next tip. Um, this probably should have been brought up a bit earlier in the video, but we're here, around, we're here now. We're talking about it right now. Yeah, you need to stay up to date with the meta guys like if you're trying to climb ladder and you have no idea what deck you're versing that's already a huge disadvantage for all of the other tips i've mentioned stay up to date with what decks people are playing if you have no idea then you you're you're already at a huge disadvantage because you just get bet by a card you didn't think was going to be there or you played around a card that they never had and you'll never know Stay up to date with meta, there's plenty of resources out there, I'll leave some links in the description. Uh, if you can at least limit the amount of randomness and then you're already going to improve your percentages guys. Like I'm always up to date because I, I'm fortunate enough to like be involved in all this and like I really just get enthusiastic and 
uh, and is passionate about all the decks, but um, it makes a huge difference. And as soon as you start to see decks that you're like, huh, I don't know what deck this is. Go to a website, go look for information, go find out what deck this is, and then have a look at it quickly. So at least the next time you may face it, or if you could do it during the game, that's even better. Bring up the deck and then see, oh, this person probably hasn't got this card. I'm going to fucking punish him for not having that card. Yeah, just have a rough grip on what people are playing. Uh, at least learn like some of the tier one, tier two decks. You don't have to like go full fucking like, oh dude, what is like the Teemo Fizz suit up deck that I've never seen before? Like you're going to have some pretty random off meta stuff here and there. People are going to play that stuff at higher ranks as well. Just get a grip for some of the most popular decks. And that's going to help you a lot. You know, go learn about Heimerdinger, even have a game with it, whether or not it's ranked or not. Learn about Karma as learn about Towering Darius, but at this point you're probably like fucking like ah fuck Harry and Darius. You know, go see what cards they're playing, understand the matchup, uh, play around the cards that they don't have, uh, play around cards that they might have. You know, it's all kind of very basic stuff. Stay up to date. Um, you know, watch some streams, see what people are playing. There's many ways you can do it yourself. Uh, one of the ways I do it, I'm not, I'm not like sponsored or anything, but I use Mobilytics quite a lot for um, getting my resources. And um, outside of that, I mainly just look at the tier list, try right? I see what's popular. Outside of that, I see some people playing a deck. I will go if it's something that's like not as popular, but might is kind of seeing a lot of competitive play, I guess in a sense. Um, and I'll go try and search it up really quickly. You can actually like search. Uh, for the champion and the deck colors specifically and see what those decks might be it helps a lot so yeah start to understand the matchups and uh, over time you'll be able to naturally just play the games better now another thing i want to mention is that the beauty of the game is some games are going to be pretty random some games are going to be lucky some games are going to be unlucky that is just that is just the grind and this is pretty much a grind to Masters, if I'll be honest. Um, you know, you might not have to reach Masters right now, but we have that reset where we get pushed back a few ranks. We don't, we don't always full, re we don't full reset back to the very start, right? We get pushed back a little bit. So whether or not you, don't, you hit Masters right now or in the future, don't be disappointed if you're not getting there right away. Be patient, keep focusing, be tilt proof, focus on improvement, play the good decks, these are all, this is going to be my main tip. This is what we hear. This is what we talked about when I summarized it. That you will eventually get masters if you really want to get masters, okay? Thank you so much.